What's the difference between an email account, an email address, an email program, and an email service? Hi everyone, I'm Leo Notenboom for AskLeo.com where I've been answering questions like this one since 2003. So it turns out the terminology around email can be really, really confusing. And yet, as with all things tech, the terminology can be really, really important to use correctly. Here's today's question. I want to change my email program from Hotmail to something else. How to do? So I do want to use this as an opportunity to clear up some of this confusion because the question itself actually doesn't make sense. Hotmail is not an email program. It's an email service, and it's unclear exactly what it is this person wants to change, whether they want a new email account, a new email address that isn't Hotmail, or if they want to access their Hotmail account using something other than the Hotmail, now Outlook.com, website. All of these things are possible, and all of these things are possible interpretations of the question as it was asked. So let's review the terminology very quickly. An email service is the company, their servers, and their software that handle your email. They route it to its destination. The email you send is handled by the service and sent on to its destination. The email you get is first received by your email service and then provided to you. An email account is your relationship with that service. So when you establish an email account, you're actually setting up your inbox, your folders, your whatevers with that specific email provider. An email address uniquely identifies your inbox as provided in your account by the email service. And finally, an email program is a computer program that you run on your PC to access your email. So what I want to do, let's switch over to my machine here. Uh, this is my Windows 10 home machine. And we'll take a look at a couple of the variations of exactly what these terms mean. We'll start with email service. So I'm going to fire up my web browser and I'm going to go to Outlook.com. An email service is something like Outlook.com, as shown on the screen here. Yahoo Mail and Gmail and other services, including those provided by your ISP, your domain registrar, your school, or your place of employment. The service they provide includes the servers and software that route the email you send on the first leg of its journey to its recipient and collect the email you receive in a location where you can access it. To begin building kind of a metaphor, think of an email service as the apartment building in which you live. An email account is your relationship established with that email service and all the storage features and functionality included. This may include more than email services. For example, Microsoft and Gmail accounts include not only email, but cloud storage, messaging services, calendaring, contacts, and much, much more. You can see that here in my Outlook.com account because I've got a whole bunch of different Microsoft programs that I can run, as well as using things like Skype or OneDrive. Those are all associated with this one email account often in the Microsoft's case, referred to as a Microsoft account. An account is often, though not always, identified by a single email address. In our apartment building, this is kind of the equivalent of the apartment in which you live. An email address uniquely identifies your mailbox as provided by your email service. When email is sent to your email address, it's collected by your email service and placed in a mailbox which you access through your email account. This particular account has no email in it right now. I'm going to send it some from a different window. Email addresses are always of the form name at domain. In this case, with the email that we just got, you can see here if I click on you, my email address is AskLeo example, the first part, the name, at hotmail.com. We'll go ahead and show more here, and you can see AskLeo example at hotmail.com. The domain part, the part after the at sign, is used to route the email to the service. 
The service is often obvious from the domain. In this case, you can tell that this is Hotmail, and that is the service providing my email services for me. But you can also look at things like Outlook.com, Gmail.com, and so on. The domain is used to identify the mail service handling the email. While an email message is on its way from sender to recipient, the name, the part before the at sign, ask Leo example in this case, is completely ignored until it reaches the email service that handles that specific email account, hotmail.com in this example. Once it arrives, it's the name that is used to see which account should receive the email. In our apartment building, your email address is like the apartment number and street address used to get to your physical mail. The domain is like the street address and gets the mail to your building. Then in the mail room, it's your email name, like the apartment number the mail clerk uses to place the message into the correct box. Now, the email program. I'm also going to fire up here on screen the mail program included in Windows 10. You can see we're looking at the same email that we were just looking at in our web interface. As soon as you say program, you're talking about computer software. An email program is the software you run on your computer to access your email. Examples besides the mail program included in Windows 10 might include Microsoft Outlook that's included in Microsoft Office, Thunderbird, or many others. An email program needs to be configured with your email account information, including your email addresses, any passwords and account information that were provided by your email service. So now we get to the confusions. You can see I have the same email open in two different ways here. I'm going to put them side by side so you can compare. On the left hand side, we're actually running Microsoft Edge. In other words, we're running a web browser. That is not an email program. It's a web browser. What we have done is we have visited Outlook.com, or as it eventually expands to Outlook.live.com, to view my email online. All I'm doing is visiting a website provided by my email service, and that website happens to show me and allow me to interact with my email. On the right-hand side, I'm running the mail program that comes with Windows 10. When it is run, it accesses the same email repository maintained by my email service, but it actually does so by downloading the email to my PC and allowing it to be viewed there. If I were to fall off the internet right now, the program on the left, the web browser, would fail to work because there's no internet connection. The program on the right, the email program that has a copy of the email on my machine, could continue to work and actually allow me to, say, read or respond to this email, saving what I'm doing until there is another internet connection again. So. Confusion number two is, for example, gmail.com, an email service, an account, an address, a program, a website. Well, some of the above, depending on what you're talking about. Gmail.com is the website and the domain associated with Google's mail service, Google Mail. While Google Mail can be delivered via other domains, it's safe to think of Gmail, without the .com, as synonymous with Google Mail. Thus, yes, we do think of it as a mail service. Gmail.com is not enough to identify an email account or address. It's not until we add a name, like AskLeoExample, to at gmail.com, resulting in AskLeoExample at gmail.com, that we get a valid email address. Gmail uses my email addresses to uniquely identify a Google account, which has access to many different services in addition to email, such as Google Photos, Google Maps, YouTube, and more. Gmail.com is not a program. It is, however, a website you can visit to access the email associated with your email account. As you can see, Gmail means many things and the exact context matters. Of course, Microsoft makes things even more confusing. 
everything that I've just said about Gmail kind of sort of applies to Outlook.com and more. Outlook is not an email service. Outlook is not a website. There's no such thing as an Outlook account. Outlook, but without the .com, is a program that is part of Microsoft Office, which you run on your computer. Outlook, or more formally, Microsoft Outlook, is an email program that you use to access email from almost any email service by downloading it to and managing it on your computer. Outlook.com, as we're using on screen here, is a web-based email service. Outlook.com is a website you visit to access the email associated with your Microsoft account. Email addresses ending in at Outlook.com and at Hotmail.com and several others are Microsoft accounts provided by the Outlook.com email service. The .com matters a lot. Why? Because Outlook without the .com and Outlook.com are completely unrelated to one another other than both being Microsoft products and both being called Outlook. You'll note when I was discussing email programs above, I was careful to include not Outlook.com as part of the description of Microsoft Outlook, since they are two different things. I now often refer to it as Microsoft Office Outlook to further distinguish between the two. Moving machines. So what is it you move when you move email from one machine to another? Well, if you're using an email program, like the mail program included in Windows 10 that I have on the screen here, then you need to install that mail program on the new machine if it hasn't been installed already. Thank you, Windows 10. Move your email messages and contact list from your old machine to your new. Configure the program to access your email account, which means telling it your email address and other configuration information provided by your email service. Start downloading any new email on the new machine and stop downloading email on the old. The only thing really moved is your collected email and contacts. Everything else is just configuration to properly access email from the new machine. If you're using web-based email, such as Outlook.com, now shown on the screen, things are simpler. Open a browser on the new machine, visit your email services website, sign in. There's really nothing to move from one computer to another. The original question was, I want to change my email program from Hotmail to something else. By now, you can see why the question doesn't really make sense. We know you're not changing your email program. Rather, you're changing your email service, which means getting a new email account on the new service and then getting a new email address. At a high level, changing email accounts means this. You'll create a new email account with a new email service that will give you a new email address. If you use a PC-based email program, you'll configure it to use your new email address and account. If you use web-based email, use your browser to sign in to your new web-based email account. Tell all your friends, your business relationships, stores that you buy from of your new email address and start using it in your daily correspondence. You might keep the old email address accessible for a while to make sure you still get email from anybody you missed. Honestly, it's really not surprising that people get confused. There is so much complexity, so many alternatives, and so many different ways to think of email. And on top of that, you get companies like Microsoft further muddying the waters by using the same term, Outlook, to mean two completely different and unrelated things. Hopefully this will help Hopefully this will help clarify exactly what it is each of the terms mean, and you'll be able to use the correct terminology when you ask a question or just when you chat with someone about the service you're having problems with. Like I said, terminology matters. It really matters a lot. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com. Thanks for watching.